have a volunteer who either themselves or know of somebody who has some form of illness, migraines, aches and pains, disease or anything or any other of those what we call symptoms in the body that they'd like some insight into. Our brain is the most sophisticated diagnostic equipment ever to be invented. And I'll be able to demonstrate using whole brain intelligence how we're able to access information on that. Yeah, that's Kristen here. Hi, how are you? I'm um, diagnosed with MS um, yep. eight years ago. Yep. Um, and uh, I did get myself to a point where I was uh, symptom free. Great. Uh, well done. And in the last two months, I've had uh, fairly significant uh, um, sensations into my fingers again and numbness running up my arm, outside of my arm to the top of my shoulder. Thank you, and it really appreciates that uh, you're, 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 damp, you're volunteering for this. All right, so, so just to give everyone a bit of a narrative, because I'm quite you know, used to using a whole brain intelligence, it, it's, it's my default operating system now. My intentions to tap into Chris already start bringing information in. So already there's, there's, it's like there's insights coming in about where the root cause is. So if you just give me a sec just to get a nice fix, it's kind of like uh, getting an anti uh, a radar fix on a target. Just bear with me two seconds. The biggest thing that shows up, and this is quite common um, with these kinds of illnesses, is I was, in, and it all stems back to belief systems. It's like this belief system of I was never good enough to please my mother because self-hate at a very childhood level starts, it's, it's this resentment within of ourselves that starts manifesting this pain in our body. And this is a very, very big cause of these illnesses. So when you look at it deeply, let me go a little bit more deeply with you here. It's like as you were growing up, you felt there's nothing you could do that would make your mother happy and proud. And that's what... And, and, and because these beliefs are so subconscious, we don't get to see that it's actually not true at all, that it was the actually opposite. It was your mother was feeling that she was useless with you. She didn't know how to handle you. She wasn't able, in her mind, to, it's like, depart from how she was raised. And so you take on this feeling, you take on these energies and you start deciding that's who I am. And that creates this self-doubt in this body, this constant why am I good enough? And that is very, very harmful to the body. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does. Yes. So, and, uh, sorry. A very, a very close reflection of, I think, what I have sorted through myself in the last um, uh, two years and uh, a, a very good summation of, of uh, probably my experience with my mother actually. Beautiful. Well let's have a quick look. Let's see what the solution presents itself as because it's, it's, it's important to identify what that root cause is but now let's look at where the solution is. So let me just have a look. Now this, this, is, this is where things get a little, little bit... Uh, a little bit precious for all of us in that there's, there's a link between you and your mother, a belief system that says, I've got to stick, it's like I've got to stick by her, I've got to stick by that energy, that belief system to help, to help her feel okay about herself. And it's that sense, and it doesn't matter, it's, you know, it's interesting, it doesn't even matter whether the person's alive or not. It's often just this ongoing belief system that says, I've got to see that out. I've got to stick by them to have them feel reassured. So what the solution is for you, it, it's, like, it's like this uh, almost energetic, this belief system where you're cutting off. It's like, no, it's her growth, her evolution to see herself in a positive light. Me walking by her, standing by her, being there to pep her up in times of need, just perpetuates herself down. You're not doing her any favours. You've got to be able to step aside, create the space 
for her to see herself mirror back what's really there. And it's up to you to go, okay, it's time for me to look at my life without that filter on, without how do I please my mother filter. Because that's in the back in your subconscious belief is what's going on, is how do I make her proud? How do I stand by her? How do I show my support? How do I show that love? Yep. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for volunteering. That's great, right. Chris. Thank you much for those, those, those insights and thoughts, Daniel. My pleasure. My pleasure. So there's, there's, as you can see, we can tap into whole brain intelligence to look at root cause. What is the thoughts behind the causation of illness? And it can be any illness any illness at all, we can pinpoint the root cause and we can look at what the solution is. And if we were working with Chris, we'd go a little bit deeper and would help him resolve some of these subconscious beliefs so he can be very clear about who he is independent of that situation. Stephen here. Stephen, hi, how are you? Good, mate. Um, yeah, I'd like to participate. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, Stephen, all I need from you is just to let me know, is there a particular symptom or a label of this symptom that you've, you've, you've got that you'd like this to be focused on? Um, I've got a couple of um, bit of tendonitis in my, my shoulder and elbow. Sure, sure. Okay, cool. So it just takes a minute and I'm redirect. It's kind of like tuning the dial from my radio station into Stephen's radio station. So if you just bear with me and I'll and I'll I'll get a nice little connection with Stephen on that. Stephen, the bit the first thing that shows up with, with what you're doing is it's your body your it's your body's way of saying you need to slow down. It's like there's this there's this innate um kind of almost uh, for lack of a better word, aggression within you to keep to keep moving forward, to keep um, keep applying yourself and to get more out of yourself. It's like, I need to get more out of myself. And it's your body's way of saying, hey, you need to slow down and you need to rest. So it's showing up. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's its own mechanism to slow you down. And this is really common that if you don't take the hints, the body starts kind of stepping in for you. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. So. So uh, I'll just see if there's a if there's a particular belief at the subconscious level to see what that what's generating that behaviour within you. If you just give me a second. Okay, the belief that shows up is I need to be more. So when you have a belief like I need to be more, we o- we often experience compensatory behaviours. That's where things like ambition stem from, being highly competitive, um, one-upmanship. Those behaviours or those states of being actually stem from that initial belief, I need to be more. And that belief, I can have a look at, you know, if that, uh, let me see if that's relevant. Yeah, it seems like, you know, those kind of beliefs very much stem from when you're in your family and you need to compete to get attention. And if you find yourself and you've got brothers or sisters or a brother there and and um, and, and he seems to be the, the golden child or getting certain attention, then as a child we, we start developing a belief, okay, I need to be more. And, then and because we don't check in on our subconscious beliefs because they are subconscious, that belief actually dictates you know, the, the course for the rest of our life. We end up choosing partners because of it. We end up choosing careers because of it. And it ends up having a very strong impact on our body. So it's a really good example. You get to see that the body's trying to say, hey, that's not true. That's actually not the case. You don't need to be more. You're everything you need to be. It's just a false belief. And any false beliefs will show up as a pain or suffering or stagnation in the body as a corrective mechanism. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely, Christian. Yeah, it seems, seems very spot on. Great, great. Beautiful. Thank you, Steve. So um, I hope oh. that was helpful for you. And uh, yeah. And happy to happy to take a, another volunteer if if anyone's open. Yeah, hi, it's Kim. I'd like to volunteer. Kim, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? Good. Is there a symptom or a, a label to a symptom that you'd like to to focus on for this demonstration? Yes, please. I get really bad migraines. Oh, um, migraines. Yes, we have. We do, a, we do a lot of work with migraines. All right, let me have a look for you. All right, yours is actually very similar to Steve. It's um, and this is a very common cause of migraines. It's this, 
it's this it's like this inner turmoil of not being enough it's it's if you can imagine it it's very much migraine sufferers have 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 a very much have a um what's the word it's it's this very kind of self beating aspect to them if you can imagine yourself constantly punching yourself in the head that's very much what happens to migraine people so if you look at what's going on with you is that it's it's this internal wrestle it's like I can't get it right. Whatever I'm doing, it's like it, it's like there's so many ways. It's like you look around you and you see, as an example, it's kind of like you see how people are behaving, what people are wearing, how people are acting, what what they're pursuing, um, what interests are popular at the moment. You look around you and you see all these things that are going on, and you're like, I can't keep up. How do I how do I be what I need to be so that that I'm keeping up? And it's when, and and it, it's this, it's this, uh, it's like a wrestle inside your head, and that's what's creating the migraines. Does that make sense? Yeah, quite actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's a very common cause for migraines. It's this, this, you know, you're just wrestling with yourself. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. And the the you know, the fundamental essence of who and what you are is I am everything. I'm everything I need to be. So your body, if you understand, if everyone's listening, your body is trying to correct itself back to that immaculate belief, I'm everything. So anything that is incongruent with I'm everything ends up being pain and suffering in some kind. Because the the process of our evolution as human beings is to restore that belief, I am everything. So our process is to keep removing limiting beliefs until we get back to that space. And until you're directly connected with that part of you, the body is a beautiful mechanism to say, hey, you're not seeing yourself as everything that you are. This is not who you are. Therefore, I'm going to flag this to you. And if you listen, this is what we call the lesson of the feather, the brick and the Mack truck. If you listen, then I don't need to bring on the pain even more. If you ignore it, then I'm going to amp up the pain. If you keep ignoring it, well, hey, look out, there's a Mack truck coming for you. And often that means ending up in bed in a hospital where you get to contemplate your life a little bit further. And um, and it's very difficult because most of these, these things are subconscious and we weren't taught in primary school how to look at these, how to look and perceive uh, this, this this subtle level of thoughts and subconscious beliefs. So, so I'll have a look at how you might deal with that. Give me two secs. Uh, very, the first thing that shows up is You've got to stop comparing yourself to other people. That, that's a really big thing for you. Is stop comparing yourself to where everyone's at, what they've achieved, what they haven't achieved, and where, the, where people are going in life. You, um, you need to put the blinkers on. Like if, if you could spend three weeks with blinkers on, not, not looking at a newspaper, not picking up a, a magazine, not reading someone's Facebook pages, just completely not taking people's dumpy phone calls and letting you know how, where they're at in life and all that jazz. If you can put blinkers on, it's like a diet. Diet from comparison. That would be a really great start. Awesome. Thank you very much. Does that help? Yeah, very much. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for being courageous to be a volunteer. Healy from Bagara. I knew, I knew, Mandy, you were going to volunteer. Thank you. Here I am. You legend, you. That's oh, great. I have a huge tumor on my liver. It's the size of a rock melon. Whereabouts is it, Mandy? It's inside my my liver. Inside your liver. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Give me two secs. Okay. There's a couple of things that show up simultaneous, Mandy. There's two. The two things are one is, um, it, it's like. How do I wear this? Um, I'm being a bad partner to Craig. That's the first one that's showing up. The second one is showing I've stuffed up my life. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So let me look a bit deeper for you. Yeah, it's like this total self-abuse of I've stuffed up my life, I've stuffed up my life. And and what the message there is for you and your body is, it's like, if that's what you believe, then let's make it a reality. I'll show you stuffed up life. And and it, it's the, 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 the key, key point for you is, let's have a look. So count your blessings. 
It's like all this time you've been thinking you've stuffed up your life, and now now you're being whacked with something that is of severe magnitude and saying, all right, now let's count how many blessings you really have in your life. So it's, it's a bit of a severe lesson, but um, it's 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 kind of like now do I have your attention? Yeah, you've got my attention, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So let me see what the resolution is. Um, you need to, pr- you really need to practice gratitude. Yeah. You need, you need to look at the rest of your physical body in awe at how magnificent it is, and how magnificent your eyes are, your heart is, your mouth is, that you can verbalize and create, how beautiful your hands are, that you can bring beautiful things to creation. Um, you need to look at Craig, and you need to adore every part of him. It's just like, like every inch of him, you need to just soak up with utter gratitude. You need to look at the birds in the trees where you live that you have a roof over your head and the beautiful food that you guys are able to cook for yourself. You, you need, it's like you need to immerse yourself in gratitude. And it's kind of like when you reach a certain point where it has landed for you that your life isn't ruined, then you're going to start to see this, this, this tumour um, start depleting. It's, kind of, it's sticking there as an insurance to say, I'm not leaving until you get this. Right, thank you. My pleasure. Oh, wow, I'm shaking. Thank you so much. You're absolutely welcome. Thanks. You're absolutely welcome. I'm glad I'm glad you volunteered. I, I, I felt you would. Oh, thank uh, rap, you. I was rap. buzzing to get on. I couldn't spe- uh, press star hash quick enough. No, you're, that's great. Well done, Mandy. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, so... so. Ah, yes, you're in Melbourne. I have no question. I just wanted to say thank you so very much for the most interesting and helpful advice that you gave, Daniel. Oh, oh, my pleasure. Thank you. It is absolutely incredible how you go to the guts of the thing and people understand what you're saying. Thank you. I just had to tell you that. I appreciate that. Well, thank you so very much. And Christian. You're welcome, June. Thank Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, uh, this is Robert and from Melbourne. Robert, how are you? Yeah, good. Christian, um, I would. I, you two guys are amazing. Thank <laughs> you for putting this on. Oh, thank you. Uh, we, you've got to have some sort of a conference together because I think um, listening to you, uh, Daniel, speaking was sort of uh, not only very enlightening, but I think it's. Uh, I think it's what the, the work you guys are doing is the way of the future. Thank you, thank you. Look, thank you, gentlemen. My, our absolute pleasure. Where look, Chris and I are going to be running some courses in the new year, and we'd love to love to share them with you. We've got some groundbreaking teachings to to give you guys and, and teach you all how to access this whole brain state for yourself. And um, it, it's really beautiful, really profound. I have um, a a question for a friend. Sure. The name of the person is Hazel. Hazel. And she has been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Mm, yep, yep. Her name is Hazel. You're wanting me to, to have a quick look at Hazel? I love it. All right, give me two secs. Mm. The first thing that shows up with Hazel is this, is this huge fear of, of the future. It's like in every moment there's what's going to happen in my future, what's going to happen in my future. It's just like this rocky ground. It's very interesting. I'm being shown that um, if you look at, you know, the symptoms of Parkinson's is that very shaky, you know, you see people have a lot of, you know, there's that shakiness in, in people and it's very interesting because that's actually the feeling within the body. It's my ground is being shaken. And it's if, if you go through, spend a large part of your life um, with this uncertainty into your future, this constant fear, this anxiety, uh, that ends up rocking your rocking your world, so to speak. That that uh, having known Hazel for twenty five years, that's a perfect answer for her. Mm, yeah. So the next area I'd like to like to demonstrate, and we might have time to go back to other people with illnesses or anything, or symptoms like that. But Christian, the next area I'd like to demonstrate is, is looking at the subconscious beliefs with someone who's experiencing a lack of fulfillment in any area of life. Because every area of life, whether it's finance, physical health, relationships, children, business, is predicated upon certain self-beliefs 
at a subconscious level. So is there anyone who'd like to volunteer who's experiencing... Can you hear me? I can. Who am I talking to? Uh, my name is Evie, and uh, I'm basically feeling a bit of unfulfillment in my business. I've got a hair business, but um, at the moment I seem to be heading in a not in the right direction. So as a result, I'm not making money, and I'm not fulfilling my my dream goal. As Okay, sure. Yeah. All right, well, what I'll do, I'm going to demonstrate because what we're able to do with whole brain intelligence, we can perceive the information frequency of subconscious belief systems. Mm -hmm. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at what your subconscious belief systems are that are creating that symptom or that impact in your life. So just bear with me two seconds. Okay, what's showing up? The very first thing that comes in is I'm a failure. Is there's a root... There's a root belief system, I'm a failure. Now let me show you how that, that's playing itself out. What it does, and you're going to, you know, this might be familiar to you, is your belief systems, you get excited, you get enthusiastic about new ideas, about making a difference, about, you know, being successful. But that belief system, I'm a failure, gets masqueraded in your life as I'm bored. I think I've had enough. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Is that familiar? Yeah. I think I've had enough now. Maybe maybe it's not for me after all. Maybe I'll look at doing something else. So, <laughs> so that's, that's, that, that there is this perfect example of the thermostat. Because of our belief systems, they create this thermostat in our, in our experience of life that when, we, when we're about to reach or break through the extent of our belief systems, that ceiling... They come in and go, no, 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 you're not a success, you're a failure. Now, in alignment with you being a failure, we're going to have to kind of put an end to this little activity of yours and so, yeah. because we don't want you to think that you're anything other than a failure because your belief mm -hmm. systems are there, you know, they like to be right. That's what they're there for, it's a belief. So it's about validating itself. So mm -hmm. that's what happens. So that's at the heart there. So let me have a look if, 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 on what what we would need to do there to help shift that. Okay, there's a couple of layers of beliefs that are there. Because mm -hmm. finding fulfillment in a career, we need, generally need to get back to seeing yourself as, as worthy of fruitful and worthwhile activities. That's, that's the biggest thing. So when, what we would do if we were helping you through that, or if you were helping yourself through that, is firstly looking at, well, let's see myself as bigger. Let's see myself as bigger than, than this failure person I've been looking at. Then what we'd need to do, let me have a look what's next then. We would be looking at installing or new belief systems about persevering through that bump because there's, this, there's a big lesson in your life about persevering past that, that little bump in the road. Mm -hmm. You need to put in new belief systems that allowed you or had you feel strong enough and empowered enough, so not feeling bored, that would allow you to push through that experience. And that's pretty much how you do it. So let me see if there's something you can do right away. Yeah, there, there, there's, I'm getting there's a bit of an exercise you could do. If you could actually sit down and say, if I was not being a failure, what would my business look like? And what would my life look like? Mm -hmm. And that would give you a real good insight as to whether you're on purpose, whether you're actually in something that's fulfilling for you. Because if you're okay. still not being a failure, whether you'd still be running that or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So have, have a look at that. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're, Makes you're so welcome. much sense. You're so welcome, Evie. <laughs> right. Now... The next thing, Christian, if we can have a third volunteer to look at a demonstration about people, I guess we kind of did that one then, about people who are wanting to make decisions about their future. Okay, Jan, what would you like? Um, I feel completely stuck with my life, really. Uh, that's probably too big a question, but I'm quite happy to listen to whatever insight you get. I just... I, I just don't know which way to turn and I know that I'm not living my life at the moment the way I should be. 
Yep, okay, that's, that's fine, that's enough. I'll, and I'm uh, lacking fulfilment in everything. <laughs> okay, all right, well, let's, let's, let's look at what the biggest insights are there uh, for you to get some um, feel at peace and, and head towards that, that fulfilment experience. Fulfillment, let me have a look. All right, now, this is a very big one for you, Jan, is that you spend a lot of time with like-minded people. Now, in this case, that's not a good thing. You spend a lot of time with people who are wanting to be in misery's company. And that is, that is the first thing you need to be doing is going on, it's like putting the blinkers on Starving yourself of these depressive converse, conversations with people, talking about how bad our life is, it just fuels the depression to the point where you almost create misery so you guys have things to talk about. It allows you to bond and therefore feel as, as accepted by each other. You feel part of something. That is the very first step you need to take. You've got to stop saturating yourself around other people's belief systems about how what a struggle life is and how miserable everyone is and, and, and how life's unfair. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I didn't realise to that extent, but... Um, mm. it's, it's absolutely... It's, it's just... It's suppressive of your intuition, of your ability to see beyond who you think you are. It, it, it's, as I said, it's formed into, well, let's see what miserable thing I can go and talk about. And, and, and I do recall that is something that came up, uh, came up recently for you. So, um, so that's the first step. Now, definitely, Jan, what I would do is, as, and I mentioned this to everyone else, we have this question and answer facility on our website where you can go in and ask Universal Intelligence a question on any area of life at www.accessingui.com you can ask any questions so go online and go and we'll be able to go deeper with you as well um, mm -hmm. but that's the starting point for you you've got to make you've got to make that decision that yep. I'm worthy not yep. to keep doing that anymore that's okay. the first bit all right thanks Jan thank that's you my pleasure as always Thank you very much, Daniel. Everything is an energy. Everything is an intelligent energy. And I was actually going to ask is relating to your uh, the course. Oh yes. Uh, that, that 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 you're providing. One of the things that I find is that I get very excited. I've done lots of courses in my life, and then um, you know once the fantastic information, etc., and then I seem to fizzle out after a little while. I don't seem ah. to stick. And I'm just wondering whether What's uh, attending your course uh, is going to uh, maybe create a bit of a breakthrough in this blockages that I'm obviously suffering. Well, let, let me explain. Let me explain uh, how that works and why it's different. At our courses, it's kind of the opposite of learning. We're not adding anything to you. It's more that we're removing something from you. So in a lot of other courses, people are adding information and getting you excited and motivating you. What we're actually doing is we're having you see that underneath the limiting beliefs of who you think you are, you've actually got these incredible abilities. We're just reminding you. We're just reconnecting you to that. So it's like a child learning how to walk. And once you can walk, you can walk. And that, that's why when you come to the courses, you actually leave with these abilities and they're yours. It's not about having to do more learning or more study or more reading. It's just you. It's just who you are. We've just had to strip down these layers of self-doubt to get to who the real you is. So then from that point on, it's just about you learning to trust and nurture those skills and applying them in every situation you can to strengthen and hone that ability. But they're yours. It is, it, as I said, it's exactly like a child learning how to walk. As long as they keep walking, rather than keep trying to crawl, they're going to keep being able to walk. And that's how our courses work. 
Okay, when's sense? your next course in Melbourne? <laughs> Does anyone have any more questions before we finish up? Just have one general quick one. Sure, who's this? It's Jan. Just listening to what you were just explaining to us after what you told me personally earlier, I just had one of those big whammos when you wake up to somebody who's been having a negative influence but you didn't realise it. Oh, great. Because they disguise themselves as being um, helpful. Does that make sense? Yes, they do. Um, Is that very, very common or is it that some of us are more susceptible to that because we have a lack of self-belief in the beginning and those kind of knowledgeable people get into us more. You've just answered your question beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> it, right. it, it is common because there's many that, many that are carrying that self-doubt and people who carry the self-doubt very much need to cling to people who have a lot of self-belief. Right. Feel okay. that voice. So okay. You, an, you answered that beautifully. I got yes. it. Yes. Um, I'd like to just share something privately because I was in exactly the same position as the the nice man earlier who asked who's done a lot of courses and even though I I personally did not do the third day of the course simply because I went into it with a nasty virus and I realized that I would have been better off doing it when I was well but because I have done so many courses and been searching for so many answers for so long, I will tell you that I took my inner cynic on my shoulder and I have great intuition about people once I can meet them and see them and experience them. And I just totally, without being over-emotional and ridiculous, I totally got Daniel and Sonia and the people around them. They're just beautiful people. And Daniel is like... Um, you know, for those of us who are a bit older and have done lots and lots of courses, I just wish I could turn back the frigging clock and have my life back at that age. And I just trust this guy completely. And, um, and I know that they're coming from the highest space. And that's the bit that's important to me. Because if we can learn to access our own answers, we don't need to keep doing millions of courses. We just need to get on with ourselves. And I'm looking forward to that myself. Oh, thanks, Jen. Thank okay. You. Thanks so much. Pleasure. All right. Well, thank you, Christian. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, attending our teleconference. And, and just a reminder for those of you who do want to um, tap into Universal Intelligence, come on to our website.